All right, welcome back to another week of the Junk Mail. We've got myself, Dil Nuz, and George Fry here today. Dil, what's going on today's show, buddy? Well, um, absolute pleasure having George on for the entire show uh, this afternoon. He's uh, he's our sports content creator, and um, he's got a bit to say about the Ashes, so we thought might as well get him on for the whole episode. But um, kicking off with the BBL to start off with, so um, the Sixers absolutely hammered the Stars. Philippi um, hit 83, Enriquez 76 not out there, so... Good start to those guys. And then um, the Thunder um, did it pretty easy against the Heat. Um, Alex Ross, the sweep ball, just um, made 61 not out. And Billings, their import, um, he made 44 not out as well. But something that I thought was actually pretty interesting. Um, obviously, the entertainment budget from the Heat was quite big last year. So they, they were able to snag Charlie Cameron, King of Brisbane. So I'll, I'll, I'll play the clip of that. Um, but as, as you can see in the clip, you know, Charlie's enjoying himself pretty well. Um, but then you roll through to last night in Canberra. Um, I don't know if they've got a similar <laughs> budget or if they've had budget issues at the at the Thunder, but they've got um, DJ Sue, which we've which we've got a picture of as well. Um, DJ Sue, maybe I don't know, seventy to eighty years old. I don't know, but apparently he's playing bangers last night. So good on it. She she kind of like I haven't been able to control myself that whole intro because I want to burst out laughing because I knew it was coming, but. If you have a look at her, she looks like someone from Monsters Inc. Like, and I'm not having a go at her. I'm just that's no, just like a factual thing. It's just I think I think it's I think it's definitely the the Grabowski lady from Monsters. Inc. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. I don't know if you can get a side by side photo deal if you want to get yeah. both of them up. She's oh, really def- enjoying us. But um, but I I just wanted to throw to George. I don't know if you've kept too up to date with the BBL or if you've just been too entertained with your own cricket um there at your local club, but. What's your thoughts on the BBL so far? Uh, yeah, boy, well, first of all, thanks for having me back. Pleasure to be here. Um, look, mate, the BBL, I don't know. I, it's one of those ones. I I'm not not massive. Like, I'm a bit of one of those cricket nuffy purists. Like, I'm a big, you know, I love the test match sit down and watching it. So sometimes the 2020, sometimes I'm not 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 that into it. But they, apparently there's some, um, some big international names rolling in this year. The Stars, even though they got belted the other night, apparently have got someone big. Um, and there'll be some, apparently some more names to be announced. So maybe that'll get me a bit more interested. But um, yeah. it's good to just have one in the background sometimes at night. But a bit of a nuffy. Being on the test matches. All right, <laughs> we'll dive straight into the uh, questions here, mate. So who's the biggest danger man for England? Well, um, there's actually probably probably should just start off by saying, I don't know if anyone's seen the news this morning, but Jimmy Anderson is going to be out with a calf injury. That got announced this morning, and I would say uh, at the Gabba, um, there's also been some 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 green wicket pictures floating around. Um, so it's probably going to do a little bit, and um, no no Jimmy Anderson's probably a big loss for England. He's he's obviously you know taken 600 Test wickets or whatever he's got, so leads the attack. So no him's probably probably a bit of a miss. But uh, my personal opinion, the big the big uh, the big chain smoker, the big data, Ben Stokes. Uh, he's the he's the he's the X factor, I reckon, for England. Um, I actually rewatched highlights of that um the the that series in England where he uh, scored that like 130, 140 not out the other night and had the crowd going crazy. Uh, and it just reminded me how good he was. Um, probably the only one with that that little bit of um, dude, we're probably gonna have to edit this out, but that that, that little bit of in him, yeah, he, yeah. um to 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 take yeah. it to the Aussies, um. Yeah. Because you know that's that's sort of, you know the big Aussie way, um, so probably Stokesy. He'd be the danger man, I, I, I reckon, for, for England. Yeah. With the Australian setup, who who do you think's got a point to prove? It's a bit of a weird one because as we sort of spoke about before, the Aussies haven't played a test since January, so it's sort of been real quiet on that front. I mean, obviously you have a, all the media chat, you know, they love to make a story up and, and, and whatever, but it's been pretty quiet on the way in. Probably the biggest one, and this is going to sound so ridiculous because he's probably our best player, but Paddy Cummins is the captain. Everyone will probably be real keen to see how he goes. Um, obviously, with Steve Smith out there as well, because like it's a bit hard to do like move field and, and think for that while you're bowling. So how that's going to sort of change but is probably, I mean, point to prove is probably the wrong word, but um, in terms of like pressure on and, and sort of seeing how it'll play out, I'd say, you know, he doesn't have a point to prove, but it, it'll be sort of interesting to see how he goes as captain now, that sort of added responsibility. I mean, he is perfect. He's, he's miso, his life, apparently he's just the perfect man. Yeah. So 
he'd pro- he's probably going to take to it like a duck to water. But yeah, um, yeah that, that that's what I reckon. On the topic, just quickly, <laughs> um, with uh, the scandals and everything going on, before we get to Dick O, I was wondering if you yourself, George, or Dill, have ever sent a dick pic. Very relatable for what's going on in the cricket world. <laughs> Oh, mate, there's absolutely no chance anyone would want to see any part of my body, let alone, <laughs> let, alone let alone my penis. So, no, that's a definitely so, a no. So, so, just to clarify, that's a no. Just yeah, that's just a strong no. Yeah, yeah, that's a it, strong it's no, a, in terms of myself. Let's just say, like, I wasn't, I, I wouldn't go John Pat Sol and just go Gatorade next to the snag type setup because, like, it would. <laughs> Like, oh, that'd be like, Jesus, is that the biggest Gatorade of all time? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like a giant, like, two-litre bottle of Gatorade. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but they're coming two-litre bottles. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, back to uh, get it, keep it PG-rated. Um, what's your favourite sex position? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> next question. Uh, if, uh, if Dicko was in the Australian lineup, where would he bat and why? Oh, uh, so he he strikes me as a. Pro- I mean, we're talking like village cricket, park cricket. He strikes me as that old pro number eight who doesn't bowl, bats eight, has fifteen darts before the game, has another five at half time. Old wily wily sort of operator. Uh, yeah. Probably yeah. would yeah. umpire t- take over umpiring duties and never give any of his own teammates out. Uh, and not not bat and not bowl. Yeah. This next question is who who smokes more darts, Ben Stokes or Mark Roden? Oh, I don't know how many how many darts Mark Roden smokes, but I'm sure a lot. I'm pretty sure Ben Smokes is a Ben Smokes. <laughs> <laughs> ben, ben Stokes. <laughs> hey, that is that is fucking comedy right there. That's good shit. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, yeah, right, well, ben, ben Stokes looks like he smokes a pack a day, so. You can only assume that that's accurate. Um, we got to go. <laughs> this is the last last question here. We got um, the series results. So who's this? What's the series result? And who's the player of the series? Oh, look! It's probably you'd be a brave man to be tipping England. Um, we sort of touched on it last week, but the top order's just not not that good. Uh, Australia and Australia, you know, it's just speak for itself. Um, I do think potentially though, England could sneak a game or two. Um, especially like with the, with that pink ball test at Adelaide, that sort of brings England into it a bit more because it tends to swing a lot, and obviously the, the sort of England bowlers rely on on, on its swinging. So, um, although I did watch the highlights before of the last time England played on the day night, then the Aussies smacked us. So, um, I think probably three one or three two, and if that last test match gets moved to Tasmania, then I like the three two as a result because. Tassie obviously probably a bit green, probably a bit, probably will swing, probably do a bit, bit overcast as we sort of said. So like that'll give England a better chance than say like an absolute flatty at, at the MCG or at Sydney. Um, so probably three one or three two. Oh, player of the series, I reckon Davy Warner. As much as I hate to say it, because I hate him, I think he's a little Same. weasel. I think he's a little weasel, but he absolutely smacks it, and I reckon. I reckon he's going to go bananas. He's going to he's going to come and come out and score a couple of you know, score score a couple of big hundreds. Uh, and so he could be he could be a good shout for player this series. I reckon. Just moving on uh, into into some NFL stuff, um, George. So give us a bit of a score update. Um, what was the NFL tipping battle that's occurring um, at the Melbourne? Oh, disaster this week. Dicko's gone five and zero on his picks. <laughs> uh, with the with the Patriots just got up no over way. the Bills, which I'm ha- happy about as a Pats fan, but it meant he's gone five and zero. So, uh, well, there's, so anyone who doesn't know, there's uh, there's dinner, and not let's just call it a night out on the line here. Loser pays for the night, uh, and I'm I'm currently coming coming last. So latest score update: I think Dicko is thirteen and six. Uh, Maddie's just behind him at twelve and seven, I believe. Um, and I am last. I've had a, had a losing week this week in that yeah. tipping comp. Um, but you've been good on the, the show. Good on the junk now. Yeah, you've been good on the junk. Now. Yeah, watchers of the show last week. I did have an early early call with the Saints Cowboys game, uh, and I believe that one did go unders. 
Uh, so pace to listen. Um, and then I think we're going all right in the, in the other tips as well. Um, so mate, yeah, st- stay tuned to the, uh, to the junk mail tips. Cause those are the only ones <laughs> we're going all right with them. <laughs> yeah. so from, from last week, um, from last week, was there any surprises, um, from your, from your bets last week or anything that you saw in the NFL? Oh, well, the, the Detroit Lions won, which is disgraceful. They're so bad. And they managed to beat the Vikings, um, who were pretty heavily favoured. Uh, that was probably the biggest upset. We spoke about the, the sort of big underdogs, um, but it was actually sort of a bit of a reversal. Um, so a couple of big favourites that actually sort of won. So that, I think the favourites went eight and six last week. But the unders, which uh, like the team total, like the total point unders, um, went nine and five um, across all the games. So that's another another big profitable one. The unders this year. Yeah. Um, so that's that's something to keep watching moving forward. Uh, the unders because uh, that's that is hitting at a crazy rate this year in, yeah. in the NFL. And um, we're just we're a little bit further out from the weekend's action as usual. But um, what's your uh, what's your thoughts or any any early plays for this week? Um, there's probably a bit too early to sort of have a look at the Sunday, um, Sunday games, but there's a, uh, obviously the, the Thursday night or the Friday game for us, uh, is the Steelers traveling to the Vikings, uh, and the Vikings are just favored by, t- uh, by field goal by three points. Um, probably, well, the early in that one, probably too early to give anything, but I think the Vikings, they don't generally lose too many in a row. Um, and they obviously lost to the to the Lions pretty poorly, so they'll be probably looking to bounce back. So there would probably be a lean there with only a touchdown. Their offense is so much better than the Steelers' offense, so if you can get three points at home, probably take that as as an early lean. We did this for you, mate. We were going to do our, our favorite segment of uh, our Facebook cringeworthy memories, but we pulled that to the side because we want to impress you, George. And we had a couple of jokes lined up. Um, from one of our uh, good mates, Scott Shelton, he actually loves you reusing this one. So uh, anyway, here's the joke, mate. <laughs> and it's the, the, the setup and the build up to this thing is fucking not helping me at all. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Um, anyway, I was uh, pre preseason started. Footy's already started, as you know, and I've been training, and I've I've fucked my shoulder. Look. I don't know if you can hear it. You probably can't, but it keeps cracking. I've just really fucked it up because, as you know me, I, I go in quite hard, um, <laughs> not, not 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 sexually, just at the footy. But um, my shoulders fucked, and boys are like go to the docks, mate. You gotta go see the docks, and I go, no, nah, no, nah, you know me, mate. Fuck tough as nails. I'm not gonna go see the docks. And they're like, go, oh, go to the docks, mate. Go to the docks. So I finally go there. Go fine. I'll go see what's going on with it. So I, oh, mate, my fucking my shoulders fucked. It's playing up, and doctor goes, oh. Oh, I'm I'm afraid you're gonna to have to stop masturbating. And I said, why? He said, well, mate, I'm trying to have a look at your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fan favourite. Seen it come oh, from. It's a good one. Oh, it's a good one. Thank we you, are. Scott. This this is unintentional, but this this episode has gone real sexual for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Again, sa- thanks so much for jumping on, uh, George, and, and always thanks so much for jumping on, Chop. Uh, it's been a good show. Uh, so we'll see you next uh, next week. But I'm uh, really looking forward to the Ashes tomorrow. Let's go.